Hebrews chapter 2 verse 3 asks the question, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? But why do we call it so great salvation? And why am I excited that every time God gives me the opportunity to preach this glorious gospel to those that still know not the Lord Jesus Christ? I want to tell you why. First of all, it is so great salvation because of its preparation. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 9, Who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. I am absolutely amazed that I'm a part of God's great plan of redemption that he determined before the world began. I know that God knows the end from the beginning, but it is more profound than that. In the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. God purposed my redemption, not because of my works or any worthiness in me, but because of his amazing, amazing grace. In Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5, unto him who hath loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. It is so great salvation because of its price. In Ephesians 1 verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Oh, it's so easy for people to say, I love you. But when God said that to a lost humanity, it cost him dearly. He gave his only begotten son. It cost our wonderful saviour. He gave us back to the smiters. He went to the cross and there he shed his precious blood to take away your sin, to take away mine. No wonder the hymn writer said, Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span there at Calvary. Then thirdly, it is so great salvation because of its provision. Romans chapter 6 verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Think of the quantity of this life. It's eternal. It is everlasting. Praise God, it will never, ever come to an end. Then it's quality. I am come that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. Abundant life in Christ. Money of the world could never buy it. But praise God is given to you and me free. Eternal life, the gift of God. So great salvation. And then it's so great salvation because of its power. Hebrews chapter 7, in verse number 25, it says these words, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost, that come unto God by him. He has the power to save to the uttermost. It's not a half-hearted salvation. Praise God, it doesn't depend upon our energy or efforts, but according to his grace. Think about the salvation of Saul of Tarsus, who called himself the, the chief of sinners. Think of the woman at the well who was living in sin, and yet God changed her life, and she drank of the water that she would never, ever run dry. And then think of Nicodemus, religious but lost. But thank God he was gloriously changed and saved too. What a wonderful salvation. And he's able to change your life. He's able to save your soul and deliver you from your sin. But then thank God it's so great salvation because of its prospects. In Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10, For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory. Praise God, he's not going to stop until he brings us right to glory. In the book of Romans, in the chapter 8, and the verse 30, it says, For whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. He's not going to stop until he brings us right into the presence of his glory. Remember he promised his disciples, I go to prepare a place for you. And then he said, that where I am, there ye may be also. 
And that's where we're going. Hymn writer said, oh, that will be glory for me, glory for me, glory for me. When by his grace I shall look in his face, that will be glory, be glory for me. It was dusk. A little girl was coming to the gate of the cemetery, about to go in. An old man was sitting there. He said, young girl, are you not afraid to go through the cemetery in the dark alone? Ah, no, sir, she said. My home's just on the other side. And that's where I'm going. I'm going to the other side to be with Jesus. It was written on a tombstone. Gone home with a friend. Friend, you can go home with Jesus and be with him forever. God grant you will come to him today. Heavenly Father, bless thy word to our hearts. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. From my heart to yours, home to yours. God bless you.